الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so inshallah, I want to cover a very important question that many people have asked. And there's still, unfortunately, some confusion within the Muslim community. And that is the question that upon whom is Udhiyah and Qurbani obligatory? Is it obligatory or not to begin with? And some people say it is, some people say it is not. So I just want to put this question to rest. Hopefully, inshallah, we all understand this. There are two different opinions regarding this matter. The very first opinion is that it is a sunnah mu'akkada. That means that it is a very preferred sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. It is not wajib, it is not fard, it is simply a sunnah of the Prophet And there are many of the Sahaba anhum who are of this opinion. There are many people of the tabi'een, the tab tabi'een who are of the, this opinion and they have some proofs on their uh, for their argument some of their proofs are that there's a hadith narrated by Jabir radiyallahu ta'ala that he says sallaytu ma'a rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eid al-adha falamman sarafa he says that i prayed salat al-eid with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when it was when it was over an animal was brought and he says, he alayhi salam says, uh, he, um, the Sahabi says, فَذَبَحَهُ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, he sacrificed the animal and he says, فَقَالَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ He recited the Bismillah, the Tasmiyah, and then he says, Allahumma هَذَا عَنِّي وَعَمَّا لَمْ يُضَحِّي مِنْ أُمَّتِي O oh Allah, this sacrifice is from me and behalf of every single person who is not able to perform the Udhiyah. So based on this hadith, they say that it is a sunnah mu'akkada, it is not wajib. They also provide the other hadith, such as there is a hadith in Muslim, that where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Allahumma taqabbal min Muhammadin wa ali Muhammadin wa an ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would perform the Qurbani and he would say, O oh Allah, accept this from me and from the Al, from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on behalf of the entire Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in another hadith narrated by Umm Salama radiyallahu ta'ala anha the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that whoever enters the month of the Hijjah wa arada an yudahiyya wa arada an yudahiyya and that anyone who wishes to uh, make a sacrifice or to perform a sacrifice. So here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is saying that whoever intends to perform a sacrifice, which implies that it is not necessary. So that is the very first opinion. The second opinion is the Hanafi opinion, uh, and that is that it is wajib. Now the question is, is it wajib on behalf of every single person in the family? And the answer to that question is that it is only obligatory, it is wajib, not even fard, it is wajib upon every single person who owns the nisab amount. The nisab amount is usually the amount, the threshold amount that a person has to give and they are uh, entitled to give zakat. So if a person is in that situation, then they will perform a qurbani or an udhiyah and this is according to the Hanafi school of thought. And once again, so if the husband, let's just say, let me give you an example. If the husband is earning money in the family, then he will perform a qurbani on udhiyah and that is once again if he has access amount of money and he is giving zakat then in that case he will perform a qurbani 
And if there is no one else in the family that is earning an income or they have an income, then a qurbani is not necessary upon them. Now, a lot of times in many of the families that we see, the husband is working, the wife is usually a, a, a homemaker, she stays at home usually, then in that case, many people are still under the confusion that then there is nothing upon the wife also. Well, remember that according to the Hanafi school of thought, that if a woman has jewelry, she has gold, she has silver, then in that case, they will give zakat on their gold and their jewelry and silver. And in that case, then a qurbani and a share must be done on their behalf too. So just a typical family, you have, a, you have the wife who has gold and silver and so forth. The husband is making uh, money and he has, you know, access amount of money. In this case, the qurbani will be done on behalf of the husband. There will be a share for him. There will be a share for the wife. And there is no need to have a share for the children. So this is the Hanafi school of thought. And the reason why they say that it is wajib is because number one, we find in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he would himself conduct an udhiya every single year. And not only that, but we also find a hadith wherein he says, man kana lahu sa'atun, that whoever has the financial ability to perform an udhiya, walam yudahi, and they do not perform the udhiya, then the Prophet ﷺ is saying, فَلَا يَقْرِبَنَّ مُصَلَّانَ They should not come close to the place where we are praying. And think about this, this is a very harsh statement made by Rasulullah ﷺ for the person who has the ability and they still do not do so. Nonetheless, I will say that whatever opinion you follow, inshallah, no problem. You can follow the Hanafi school of thought or the other three schools of thought. But the most important thing that I will say is that we try to, you know, this is the time of the year where we do try to perform an udhiyah, where we do, where we do try to perform a qurbani. And this is the only time of the year that we actually do this. So, you know, when we are spending money on our families, we're spending so much money on, you know, the other, you know, other aspects of life, whether it is our home, whether it is other luxury items and so forth, then what harm will it do if we have to spend two, three hundred dollars for multiple shares, or if it's just, you know, one or two shares, it is not going to really break the bank for us. It is, you know, it's a small amount of money. Let's try to do this to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where rather than getting into this whole debate, is it fard, is it wajib, is it not wajib? Just open your heart for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember the overall and the overarching principle of Allah is that when you give for Allah's sake, Allah will inshallah give you back the money and Allah will return it. The other two questions quickly I do want to sh um, share with you is the question that many people ask is that can you just simply give money rather than doing an udhiyah? So you don't want to do an udhiyah, but you're just giving money to a poor person. Rather than giving them the money, you're giving the money in the hands of a poor person. Will that substitute for an udhiyah? Now I will say the answer to this question is that according to majority of the scholars, no, it will not. There is, there are some such as Saeed ibn Musayyib uh, who has said that yes, you can give a sadaqah, but that is a very minority opinion. Majority of the ulama across the four schools of thought, uh, Ibn, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Imam Nawi rahmatullahi alayhi, they all have said that this is, this is the day, the day of Eid, where you sacrifice an animal and you distribute the meat. So this is the time where you actually should sacrifice an animal and spending or giving the money in the hands of a needy person will not substitute for the udhiyah. Because remember the udhiyah is according to the majority of schools of thought, it is not mandatory. So if you're giving, if you're just giving a sadaqah in the hands of some needy person, that's considered as a sadaqah, but it will not be considered as an udhiyah. An udhiyah is separate and the, uh, the sadaqah is separate. The last question that I, I want to quickly address that many people do ask is that can I send my money overseas or not? And the simple answer to that question is yes, you can. But there are two things I will say about this. Number one, it is your obligation to inquire where you're sending your money. 
We live in a world that today, unfortunately, there are some situations where people take the money, they don't, uh, they don't dispense the money in the correct way. Um, so in, for, because of that, we have to always make sure that whatever organization you are giving your money to for Qurbani purposes, making sure that that is a legitimate organization, making sure that they have some credibility and they, you know, they will take care of your Qurbani, that is upon you to do your own research. But you do, you can send your money overseas. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, of, of course, there are many people who say, and it is a very valid argument that you should give your, your qurbani to the people who are local. And there's nothing wrong with that. But brothers and sisters, there is no doubt in the fact that many of us, we have, you know, our hearts are attached to the situation, the overwhelming situation of Muslims all over the world. We see what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Africa, in Yemen, in, uh, in Kashmir, in Syria, in Pakistan, uh, in so many other places, in Palestine and so forth. And we know what is the situation. So if you have to, and if you wanna send your money overseas, absolutely no problem remember that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he looks at your niyyah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that you have spent money to help someone else out there is no need to make a big fuss about this and you know i usually give this recommendation and you can take this recommendation if you wish or not that you know one day do your qurbani here in america the next year send your qurbani money overseas and that way there is somewhat of a balance because it is also very important important to understand that if all of us send our money overseas, then what's going to happen to our brothers and sisters here in the community who are desperately uh, in need. So that's why there has to be a balance in some capacity. So you can do one year here, one, one, uh, one year here, one year overseas. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And if you just so choose to do every year here, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you want to do every year overseas, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And at the same time, I will say that try to do a Qurbani here in America as much as you can. Why? Because brothers and sisters, today our children do not usually have that experience to witness a Qurbani on Udhiyah. See, overseas, many of the children, they see this every single day, I mean, every single year. They look forward to the day of Eid al-Adha and the cows are being brought into the streets, the bulls are being brought into the streets, the, the goats, the sheep, the rams, they all are being brought into the streets and there's, you know, everyone sees that this is the day of Eid. But to, in America, if we keep on spending, sending our money overseas, our children will never have that experience in America. And eventually, this sunnah and this experience will be lost. So that is why I usually recommend that time to time, try to do your qurbani here. Or if you know that you know, you're sending your money overseas, but there is someone who is performing qurbani and udhiyah in your own area, Take your male children in particular, show them that this is what the day of Eid al-Adha is all about. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ability to understand these things. As I said earlier, that when it comes to um, the Udhiyah, two primary opinions. One says wajib, the Hanafi school of thought. The other three schools of thoughts say that it is not wajib. The Ahnaf say that it is wajib upon every single person who has the wealth of Nisab, the threshold uh, amount to give zakat. If you own that amount of money, then you should give it. And by the way, I do want to clarify one thing. If you have children and they are older, they have a job, they're taking care of themselves and so forth, then in that case, they should also do an udhiyah. And in that case, either they can do the udhiyah or the father will give a share or, or he will pay for their share. Either way, a qurbani or udhiyah, according to the Hanafi school of thought, should be done on their behalf too. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our udhiyah and our qurbani. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. واذكروا الله في أيام معدودات فمن تعجل في يومين فلا إثم عليه ومن تأخر فلا إثم عليه لمن اتقى 
واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحشرون